Up above, three Japanese warships bang away with their sonar, circling our position like vultures. Now, it's their turn to enact revenge upon USS Gudgeon after the loss of their light cruiser. The seas are calm, and the veil of protection that nighttime provided us is starting to lift. The enemy escorts will put up one serious fight, I am certain of it. Above us, hell lingers. We have an enemy destroyer which just stopped pinging directly above us. All ahead flank. Left full rudder, please. Let's get this boat moving. I'm sure it's laying depth charges now. The boat is currently at around 200 ish feet. That's what we're dropping down to now. Bearing 209 medium speed and closing. Let's go down to 200. You can hear the destroyer screw spinning right above us. Let's take a look at the map here. Okay, yeah, she did pass right over the top of us, which is unfortunate. We've been uh, we've been here for around 40 minutes now. They have been pursuing us. Uh, the enemy warships have not dropped very many depth charge patterns, however, which is quite surprising. Rudder amidships here. Rudder amidships. We will head uh, northwest for the time being. Let's keep sprinting to avoid a possible depth charge pattern. We're pretty deep. I believe we are below a thermal layer as well, which is good. Okay, we can slow down back down to two thirds, I suppose. Thank you. All right, and we are being pinged once again. I wonder if ash cans were dropped. Part of me thinks they weren't. I think they would have exploded by now. Which one is probably pinging us here? So this is the one that went over, I want to say. The one at 150, and then we have another pursuer at 270. The third warship has gone back towards the rest of the convoy, so we are only being pursued by two, thankfully. Well, folks, it's been around 20 minutes since I last spoke to you, and it seems the warships have moved away. They are heading back towards the rest of the convoy. We are coming up to periscope depth now just to take a look. All in all, they hunted us for a little over an hour before returning back to the convoy. They only dropped a couple of patterns as well. We definitely want to track them on their way out. That'll give us a good idea of where the convoy is. Looks like they are heading uh, three or 295 degrees. That's the track of the convoy. So let's plot that out way out here. Hopefully we can engage them uh, before they get into the shallow waters. Also, this close to the home islands, aircraft are going to be a serious, serious problem, especially during daytime, which uh, I believe it now is. We will see in just how bright the conditions are once we come up to periscope depth. The boat is now at periscope depth. Let's take a look at what the heck is going on. We secured from silent running, so we should begin reloading all of those torpedoes. All right, and much closer than I thought. There's one of the destroyers at around 350. And what else is out there? Where's number two? There's a life raft. Oh, that's interesting. That's probably from the cruiser. We destroyed... Oh, hello, sun. Quite bright. Anything out there? Um, another life raft way out there. Interesting. Guess they didn't stop to uh, pick up survivors. This one pretty close. Interesting. 
All right. Well, I only, I guess I only see that one destroyer there. Okay, nope, there's number two. There's number two, dead ahead. I do not see the convoy, however. We definitely want these guys to get a little further away before we uh, surface. That is for sure. Uh, and then we'll try to chase down the rest of the convoy and get in front of them during daylight hours. Not something I'm really looking forward to. I'm sure we will be under constant air attack. So it should be, should be exciting. At five before noon, USS Gudgeon popped up to radar depth to sweep for any surface and air contacts that may be lingering above us. Thankfully, the coast was all clear and the order was given to surface the boat. The chase was on once again and the watch crew was on high alert. The chances of USS Gudgeon coming under air attack in these waters is extremely high. Ten minutes on the surface was all we got before air contacts were picked up on radar. A crash dive was ordered and the boat plummeted down to 150 feet. At this rate, it will be very difficult to overtake the convoy. However, we will continue to try. Ship spotted. We have made visual contact with one of the escorts. However, no other vessels are in sight. Regardless, this is a great sign and we are on their tail. Thankfully, we have been on the surface for nearly an hour with no aircraft detected. Bring our contact. Bearing three, zero, five, long range. Gudgeon has established radar contact with the rest of the convoy. It seems they have continued their course of 295 degrees. The good news is we will easily be able to overtake the enemy and get into an attack position. The bad news is the point of intercept will be in shallow waters. Okay, folks, after a long chase, we are in a relatively good position here. We have the entire convoy off to our nine o'clock. You can see them all out there. The destroyer is right here at 275 degrees. That is the closest contact. We are around three nautical miles away from their track, uh, give or take. They have changed course slightly, and as I've been tracking them, they have been zigzagging a little bit uh, every now and again. So yeah, it does look like we're two or three nautical miles away from their course. Uh, we should be able to make that approach submerged. I think it's about time to dive the boat to periscope depth just to avoid Ship's being off. detected. Uh, thankfully, we were only <laughs> intercepted by aircraft once, so... Uh, we've been very, very lucky, I want to say. Let's go ahead and check our depth under keel. 495 feet, so not as bad as I thought. I thought we would be in some serious shallows, and I'm happy to hear that we are not. Let's go down to PD, shall we?
We are in position and the convoy is closing. Our targets are that big boy right there and then the warship behind her. There is another destroyer behind those two there that we need to be worried about. Our primary concern right now, however, is our scary destroyer friend that we remember from earlier. The convoy is moving at around seven knots and they are zigzagging. If we go to the map here, we can see they are just uh, turning <laughs> every which way. That is definitely going to complicate our torpedo attack. However, I think we will be able to make do here. Uh, once these targets get a little bit closer, it should be easier to identify them. And I think it's time to man battle stations. Okay. And like I said, this is definitely the most fearsome destroyer out of the bunch. I do not want to be detected by her. So after making all of that racket, we are going to rig for silent running. Okay. And drop our scope and lay and wait until she passes us. And uh, then we'll start gathering information for our torpedo attack. It has been around 15 minutes now, and the leading destroyer has passed us. She's at around 021 degrees and has no idea we are here. This freighter has passed the zero degree mark as well, and we are getting closer and closer to our targets. I went ahead and identified this one. It is a heavy mine layer uh, here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but it is a mine layer, which is very interesting. It's only 4,400 tons. I must admit it looks much bigger. However, we are going to still torpedo it as that is a fairly interesting target. Now we need to identify this merchant vessel and I remember it being towards the back. She is almost 10,000 tons if I remember correctly. If I remember right, she is quite a large freighter. Let's go ahead and flip through here, and uh, hopefully I will find her here. He and Maru, 11,000 tons. Yeah, that is that is one fantastic target. Uh, definitely will be our primary target now. Let's go ahead and establish her range. It is going to be much easier now that it is daytime, and the seas are nice and calm. There we go, set. Range to target is 2,991 yards. Angle on bow currently. Let's go with 20 degrees to starboard set. Turn on the position keeper for now. Drop our scope. Honestly, we don't even need the position keeper on. We'll just keep our scope down for a little bit. What a interesting formation. It looks like they've kind of steadied up. They stopped their zigzagging. I'm sure there is some sort of pattern they are following, however, I haven't been tracking it closely enough to know when they zigzag. Okay, we will give it a few minutes here. Um, there we go. Let's take a, another look. It's been four minutes now. Up scope. There we go. Lock on target. Wow. Okay, let's get this. Mark, 2,624 yards out. What do they show? That's what I got. Target plot shows speed seven knots, course 227 degrees. Send that to the TDC, turn on the position keeper now. All right, and now we need to lay in wait. That is our target, she is range is 2,500 yards and it's not not bad at all let's give it a little bit of time compression here continue to close in on the target we are in position to begin firing our torpedoes lock on target this will be the one we fire at first we will fire two fish at her I think so speed is seven knots. Let's go ahead and establish range real fast. Set range, 2,700 yards. Angle on bow, 75 degrees starboard. There we go. I think that is fine. Speed seven knots, make sure that is plugged in. Target is slowly closing. Looking good. 
open tubes. Well, let's set this up. Contact. Let's set this up. Contact for all. Okay, all the tubes set to contact. 10 feet for tubes one and two. We'll do 15 feet for the rest. Okay. All right, tube one. Fire. Tube one away. Tube two, one degree to the right. Tube two, I'll fire at the 10 second mark. Fire. All right, tube two away. Switch to the close target. Oh my gosh. Angle on bow, 110 degrees. Bastard zigzagging like crazy. Set speed seven knots mark. Okay, wow, that is less than ideal. Tube three, fire. Tube four, fire at a zero degree offset, fire. Tube five, one degree to the left with the zigzagging. Fire. I doubt all of those are going to hit, but we will see. We will see. have it all of our torpedoes missed which is uh which is great <laughs> which is great oh man that zigzagging really killed me what a what a freaking what a shame what a shame okay well that's the way it is i suppose that's the way it is uh, now it's their turn to hunt us. Man, God, that is five torpedoes. Uh, I guess that's a pretty good Mark 10 performance. Hmm. That's, uh, I guess that's typical for the Mark 14s, I guess is what I was saying. And with their zigzagging and all, I mean, they... Man, they turned hard as well. That was that was nuts. Okay, well, down scope. I mean, there's nothing much I can do here now. Let's turn around. We can try yes, again sir. with our stern torpedo tubes, I suppose. Yes, sir. Oh, brother. Thankfully, after this attack, the Japanese escorts did not pursue. USS Gudgeon slowly slipped away. Unfortunately for us, the waters were getting shallower and shallower as the convoy chugged towards their destination in Hokkaido. The decision was made to call off the chase and return to safer waters. It was just not feasible to conduct another attack. In the early morning hours, our hydrophone operator picked up a lone merchant contact off to the north. USS Gudgeon would pursue. We have over a hundred rounds left of deck gun ammunition. This is going to be excellent target practice. 
we are closing in on the Japanese merchant ship and it turns out there's not just one there are two sampans operating with this freighter another coastal convoy by the looks of things so this will be an excellent task for our deck gun crew let's man battle stations and turn to the east to bring our gun to bear on the large freighter which I'm sure is packing heat Let's get ready to fire. How far away is the target? Let's reduce speed down to full. She is only 10,000 feet away. I'm pretty darn close. She is not firing at us. There's no searchlight, so we should be able to get the first couple of hits in. Looks like the freighter is now in arc. Let's get another update on the range, please. Yes, sir. All right. We'll aim at 3,100 yards. Rudder yes, amidships here. Rudder amidships. Yes, Thank you very much. And fire one. Let's see if we get one hit here. Just short, increase range by 200 yards. That was just short of the target. Not sure if these sampans are armed. Sometimes they are. Uh, so we need to be worried about that. There we go. Direct hit on the freighter. No searchlights or anything. Let's see if we start taking fire here. Let's start rapid firing now. Really just continue to fire as quickly as possible. The stress flare just went up. I am not 100%. It looks like the sandpans are running. Honestly, probably good. Gun crew, fire yes, at will. Engage the target, please. Firing at will. Uh, engage yes. the freighter. Just firing short there. Uh, we are not taking fire just yet. Yes, we'll see how this develops. So let's reduce speed down yes, to sir. standard now. Oh my yes, gosh, sir. what a horrible shot. Hopefully they uh, they zero her in here shortly. Okay, they are pointing a searchlight our way now. They finally picked up where we are. Still not taking fire, just yet anyway. And we're starting to get pretty consistent hits on the target. Another distress flare just went up. Oh boy. Hopefully no warships are close enough. We didn't pick any up on hydrophone or radar, so I think we are clear for the time being. There was just a massive explosion on board the freighter. However, she is still taking quite a bit of punishment. We have still not been fired upon, which is quite nice. We actually hit the sandpan a couple of times there as well. Uh, she just happened to be in the way of the freighter here. It looks like there is a probably a three or four inch gun on the stern there, which is quite worrisome. Hopefully we can put this thing under uh, before that swings into action. We may need to, let's start turning. Let's start turning to avoid that gun. To okay, she yes, is sir. burning. She is now burning. Still getting multiple hits. I ordered my crew to aim for the waterline. However, yes, it seems like they're hitting the hole the yes, most. Sir. She's going down. She's going down. All right, let's yes, transition sir. to the sandpans. There's yes, one. Where the heck did where did sandpan number two run off to? Oh, she's <laughs> she's a running. She's way out there and trying to get the heck out of here. Uh, and now my crew here. Let me let me take a shot at the sandpan. Let's go 800 yards or so. Guns ready. Fire. All right, there we go. A hit. Massive explosion on the sandpan. There we go. That's one done. Swing around to number two here, which is quite far out. Quite far out. Fire one. That'll probably be short. Yeah. Wow. Uh, let's go 2,500 yards. Fire. When ready, 
There we go. Fire. Probably... Yeah, just short. Okay, let's close in on her. Wow, geez, that thing really put some distance between uh, between us. That's quite impressive. It's moving that quickly. Yeah, it's 4,000 yards out. All right, we will close in on the next target. Okay, we are now in range of the target. Let's reduce our gun down to, oh, 800 yards or so. Fire. There we go, direct hit on target. Shouldn't be too hard now, just uh, taking, cleaning up the junk. Another good hit. See, it shouldn't take too many before she catches fire and goes under. Oh. I mean, not, yes, there we go. There's an explosion. Jeez, another massive explosion, my goodness. All right, that's number two going down. Or number three, I suppose. We have, let's see, a crab boat. Oh, 2,000 tons. I'll take it. I'll take it. We have destroyed quite a bit this patrol, despite our uh, recent experience with our torpedoes. I have to say that was quite a disappointing attack, but... It is what it is. By the time, by the time we broke contact and were able to surface, I mean the enemy convoy was already up here. It seems like they were heading towards this port. There was just no chance that we were going to catch them. There was no chance. I mean this was our last opportunity to attack, unfortunately. Well, I think we have uh, done some serious work in these waters. I think it's time to kind of head south. Let's see the torpedo situation. Not great. We only have one in the forward tube. And uh, looks like we have five torpedoes in the aft compartment. So uh, we, we can still dish out some damage, that's for sure. But we are going to do it in new waters. Well, folks, that is going to do it for today's episode. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you all on the next one.